the background? I do go around the past hour. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nikhil Siddharth has just joined us as well. And we request you to join us in lighting the lamp as we start the event. Thank you so much. I'd like to now invite Nanika, Dia and Reva to please come up onto stage. And as a token of our welcome and appreciation, I'd like to request Nanika to please present a bouquet to Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai. And I'd like to request Dia and Reva to present a bouquet to Mr. Nikhil Siddharth. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please hear it for our guests this evening and the lovely little girls who've welcomed them so beautifully. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I invite all of you to please step off stage. And Mr. Sardesai, sir, I'd like to re-invite you onto the stage as I introduce you to everyone here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an important time because we're going to hear some very impactful, some very powerful words. Please help. Thank you. Uh Thank you very much for having me here in Hyderabad. Uh, your weather is as warm as the people of Hyderabad. So it's one of the best cities in the, in the country to come to. So thank you very much, first of all, for having me here in Hyderabad. Before anything else, I think rather than me, we should be celebrating young Ishanvi. So she deserves another round of applause for what she's achieved. You know, I, I do a quiz. I do a quiz show for young school kids. Uh, we had to stop it during COVID, but it was a great opportunity to talk to young children. And uh, maybe next time I should have a quiz question. Who is the youngest published author in the country? And who knows? The answer could well be Ishan B. So congratulations, because you might well find yourself on the next round of quiz to be the youngest to have been published. I'll also tell you why I think it's very special that a 10-year-old should do what Ishanbi has done. This is the Instagram age. This is the age of social media where you're supposed to write everything in 280 characters. My children once showed me something called Snapchat. Now, I didn't understand what it was because the photograph went off inside a minute. But apparently, that is the magic of the times in which we live. Everything is instant. It's, it's here today, it's gone tomorrow. Now, in this age, very few people, therefore, particularly of Ishanvi's age, seem to spend enough time in actually putting together something which can be remembered even 5, 10 years from now, a book. This is not the book age. When we grew up, many of you here, we used to... Think about it, we didn't have mobile phones, we didn't even have internet. So we actually wrote letters to each other. You know, in Hindi they say, uh, Pyar hota tha khat se. You know, old Hindi films or even Telugu films, I'm sure, the romance was over letters. Today no one writes letters to each other. They're all on the mobile, talking to each other, or doing FaceTime with each other. As a result, the art of writing, the art of uh, communicating through words, is increasingly being lost. Uh, I had actually started this quiz program to encourage young people to at least read newspapers, uh, to maybe watch the news. Uh, some of them do, but the truth is many of us don't, or many of our children don't. Uh, many of the adults also don't. You see a family now across a table, each of them is looking at their mobile. None of them is actually talking to each other. They have very little time 
to actually talk to each other. So Ishanvi has reminded us that there is a world of letters that still exists. And I think that's what makes this book special. When we grew up, we grew up because of Enid Blyton. And there were books like Famous Five and Secret Seven. Then another generation came up which grew up on J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter. Uh, now maybe you can start a series called Mysterious Mayhem. And every year, bring out a book which can tell us something about the mysteries of this world. Uh, as I said, for a young girl to do this is quite remarkable. To have it illustrated, and you've illustrated it very well, is even more special. Because I think when you tell a story to younger people, they want the story through pictures. Now, Enid Blyton was an adult. J.K. Rowling was an adult. For young people to tell stories to the young, excited people out there makes it even more special. Let me also say that, as I said, when we were growing up, we had Amar Chitra Katha. And that was also illustrated. History was illustrated. So the illustrations make your book, Ishanvi, even more special. And I think there is the innocence of the young in your book writing which makes it special, that you actually imagine all these lovely stories around you. And all of us actually have one story in our lives, which we should tell. Each one of us is capable of telling one story. Some of us may tell it in 500 words, some of us may tell it in 100,000 words, but we all have stories because we allow our imagination to run free. I'm also glad that you've done this because we are finally in this audience without masks, looking at life beyond COVID, hopefully. For two years, we were all stuck to each other. But I think in those two years, while we were stuck at home, we remembered things like family. We remembered that we could talk to each other. Otherwise, we were all living in a world far apart from each other. But we were brought together by COVID. Which is why I think, Ishanvi, it's not just you today who deserves big credit. It's your parents who perhaps deserve even more credit than you for encouraging you to do this. I saw a program last night. It was a program on Netflix of the great racing driver, Lewis Hamilton. And Lewis Hamilton's father was there. And Lewis Hamilton's father, and there were old pictures of young Lewis Hamilton doing go-karting at the age of 10. And Lewis Hamilton's father says, I saw in my child the potential, and I saw that my child dreamt of car racing. My job was only to give wings to his dreams. Your parents, Ishanvi, and I know your father in particular is a driving force, as I'm sure is your mother, have given wings to your dreams. And therefore, they deserve a huge amount of credit. Because without your parents, and without all our parents in a way, we would be nothing. As young people, we often forget all too easily what is the debt that we owe our parents because they are the ones who in a way inspire us. So when you go home tonight, remember to give them a special, special kiss and affection for what they've done for you to bring out and encourage you to bring out this book. So all I can say at the very end, may there be many more wings that will enable you to fly, write many more books, explore your creativity, and who knows, one day you might be India's answer to Harry Potter. So all the very best to you and your lovely friends. Thank you very much once again for having me here. I feel a little old in this gathering, and that's good, because when your gray hair and I see all these young, excited faces, it's always nice to be among the young, because when you're among the young, you can also get inspired to be youthful. All the very best. And yes, do start reading newspapers also. And read the news occasionally. You don't only have to know what uh, film stars are doing. <laughs> you can also know sometimes what your politicians and others are doing as well. So have a great time. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. First of all, a very good afternoon to everybody present here. And uh, it's a very tough act. Once you have somebody as amazing as Rajdeep Sardesai sir here speaking, speaking after him is like a, is a daunting task. Uh, I, I thought it was, he was enough, but then I had Ishanvi speak after him, and Ishanvi did an amazing job, like hitting the ball out of the park. So I am very nervous for the first time speaking on stage now. Uh, so sir, we have always grown up uh, watching you speak, sir, and 
a lot of our vocabulary has come from, like, you know, some of it has been picked up uh, from you too, so you're an inspiration. And when I look at Ishanvi today, I just, I'm reminded of myself, I mean, don't think you'll become like me later on, <laughs> but I'm reminded of my 11-year-old self because, uh, as I was just saying, Enid Blyton was uh, the bread and butter, you know, for every, uh, every kid back in the 1980s, 1990s. So my first book was, I, I still remember it as Five Go to Billycock Hill. That was the famous five book which I read, which was given to me by my mother, and she encouraged me to read. And from then on, I, had, I always had this burning desire to write too, as a kid. But I couldn't. So now when I see you, I, I just, I can say how privileged you are to get this opportunity, and as you said, your family has been very supportive, Vishanvi, especially Divya Garu and um, Rajana, we call him Rajana, Rajshikar Reddy Garu. So both of them have been very supportive, and I'm telling you this, you are very, very lucky to have this opportunity, and you have made full use. Because I've gone through this, I've gone through the pictures, I've read part of it, it's beautiful. So the first review is coming from me, guys. This, this, this book Thank you. Is, is a hit, Mysterious Mayhem is a, is a very good read. And I would have enjoyed this. I enjoy this even now. So I must have enjoyed this as a kid. So all of you go get your copy on Amazon. And you already have just heard that all the proceedings are going to go for a very good organization called T-Hope, which uh, I am happy to be a part of also because Rajana has made me a part of it too. And uh, it, is, uh, it is like, it is a very good cause. So every single rupee that you're going to spend is going to go for education purposes for the underprivileged. Uh, I cannot say much more, but the only thing I can say is uh, that uh, telling stories is, is, a very, is a very noble job. So through movies, I try to do my bit by telling stories too. So good messages, as you said. And I really love this message which you talked about, Ishami, about if you are, you cannot blend in if, how can you blend in when you are born to stand out? So I truly believe in that. And every single book of yours, I'm sure, is going to give a message. And I try to do that through my movies. And so does it every day through his wonderful opinions and news. So uh, I'm, I'm really proud that you've uh, achieved this, Ishami. I've seen you as a kid. I know we played cricket together and all that, but I never knew that you were this brilliant. So congratulations again. And this should definitely inspire more kids to come forward and not just uh, blog or blog, I think that's good too, but sometimes also think about writing a book and putting your thoughts on paper through a pen. So it's a very powerful medium. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, you so much Mr. Nikhil Siddharth. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Nikhil Siddharth. Some very, very cool things and what brought her from going to, from going uh, from an avid reader and a voracious reader to now a published author. Okay. So, Ishu, when did you decide that you were now going to write a book? What was that trigger? Um, so, I decided to write my book in December 2020. And I love to write and read. And the reason why I wanted to write this book is because, first of all, reading is my passion. And I love to write because you can use your imagination and you can create your own stories. And the, partly the reason why I wrote this book is because since there's nothing to do with in COVID, I decided to write a book. All right, everybody. There was nothing to do in COVID, she says. <laughs> How many of us wrote a book or did anything else during COVID? I know for one, I treated it as summer break. Literally treated it as summer break. So that's pretty cool. And... Uh, a lot of the books that you've been reading, you know, when in, in, in your speech you mentioned that you have these few favorite authors and then many, 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 many others, <laughs> right? Who, which one of these authors are you most inspired by? I have many, but one of the authors I am inspired by is Malala because even after she, after she was shot in the head, she never gave up. Mm -hmm. That's really and interesting. So, do you read a lot of the books... Uh, or, or do you read Malala's writing? Do you read a lot of that? Yeah. Okay. So that's in the non-fiction space. Okay. So you like to read non-fiction as well. Yeah. And wh what about fiction? What's your favorite title in fiction? Or is that a tough one? Um, that's very tough. If you had to say, if you had to name your top three most favorite books. Um, like, I can name one. Go for it's it. It's Daughter of the Deep. Daughter of the Deep. Yeah. Okay. So basically in that book, it 
Tyler said girls can do anything. Girls can do anything. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> clearly, clearly. And there's this other book you were telling me about some time back. Uh, Wonder? Yeah. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that as well. So it's called we, Wonder. Yeah. Okay. So the message in the book is that you can never blend in when you're born to stand out. Let me repeat that, everybody. You can never blend in when you're born to stand out. And that's a beautiful message. That's a powerful message. Does that inspire you in any way? Does that yeah. message inspire you? Yeah. It does. And was that one of the triggers or prompts that got you to write this book? Was yeah. that something that inspired you? Yeah, amazing. Definitely. It's 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 so deep. It's so profound. It's amazing how something that profound resonated with you at your age because it's something that I think can resonate with everyone that's sitting here. You can you can ne never blend in. When you're born to stand out. When you're born to stand out. Let's remember this one line, everybody. All right, you can never blend in when you're born to stand out. And I think you're turning that into a fantastic example today. You said uh, that you had the writer's block. Yeah. Right? How, how did you sort of overcome that? So basically, my mom and dad encouraged me to continue writing even when I didn't want to. That's beautiful. Because I lost all my ideas at one point. Uh-huh. So, yeah. So, your parents, you had a lot of support from your parents. And also from my brother. From your brother? Okay. He, he playfully gives me ideas. And, yeah. <laughs> Can we hear it for Dhruvi? Let, let, let me actually, I'd love to ask uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Casey Reddy, was the coming to life of this book mysterious mayhem? Was it a lot of mystery and a lot of mayhem to actually get this book out? Or was it a, a lot of mayhem? <laughs> Lovely. As, as she's saying that, you know, it, this wouldn't have been possible without the support from all of you. Do you, do you uh, in any way think that uh, or, or, or what do you think about being a published author at such a young age? Does that mean anything to you as such? Um, or, or, you know, or it's like, ah, whatever, okay, just the first of many. Like, I got inspiration from this other book. Um, I, didn't, I forgot the title, but another person like my age, like 11 years old, also wrote a book. So then, like, Wow. No. That, that book inspired you. Someone your age writing a book yeah. also inspired you. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. What's the name of this book? I forgot. You forgot. Okay, no problem. That's fine. You said your biggest support system in bringing this book to life has been your family, right? When your mother's always been reading to you ever since you were a little, you know, baby, what books or what kind of stories really fascinated you? What are the genres that you know, you sort of started leaning towards more in terms of reading. I love thrillers. I love mystery. I love suspense. Thriller, mystery, suspense. Yeah. And is Mysterious Mayhem, you know, does Mysterious Mayhem have elements of all of these three? It does? Yeah. Okay, everybody. Are you curious? It's got mystery. It's got, what else? Thriller? It's a thriller. And also it's an adventure. And it's also an adventure book, an adventure story. So if you have... I think this Sunday evening after the event is over, you all can go back home with one of these copies and make sure you spend your Sundays reading about Mysterious Mayhem. Alright, just immerse yourself in this. It promises to be a thriller, a mysterious book filled with suspense and adventure. And who are the main characters of the story issue? So there's Mia and Sophie and they go on a, a vacation to Florida but they end up in Chicago and Whoa. you have to read to find out more. Okay. You have to read to find out more is what issue says. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. We all know how COVID-19 has been an important part of your life. I was actually going to ask you that, but you use that time to, you know, bring this book to life, write this book, right? You, you read, you write. What else do you enjoy? What are your other passions? What are your other callings? Um, I like to sing, I like to dance, I play wow. the piano, Oh. and I love to do art. So essentially everything that is related to expression. Yeah. Yeah? 
drawing, music, dance. What else? Singing. Singing. That's absolutely amazing. And wh what about like your core subjects in school? Do you have a favorite? No. You don't have a favorite subject in school? So you're interested in all of these expressive activities. That's awesome. And do you, do you play music and everything on a day-to-day -day basis? Do you yeah, sing? Do you play I play music? the piano and Beautiful. I'm in my second, I'm going to my second grade in theory and I'm doing my first grade exam in piano. Wishing you all the very best as you progress from one stage to the next. Is there anything you'd like to say to everyone here? Uh, if you if you if you dream big, you can achieve those dreams. If you dream big, you can achieve those dreams. And one last question before before we you know sort of let you go. Do you see yourself writing as you grow up? Do you do you continue to see yourself as an author? What's going on in your mind? I mean, like I I would I'm already started my second novel, but I also want to do other things like singing and art and stuff like that. But yeah, so. You've already started your second novel? Whoa, slow down, Ishu. <laughs> Just kidding. You're giving me a complex. 